A submarine set out to explore the remains of the Titanic, and now it is lost. Also, teens are reporting that they are more depressed than they've ever been. And what is going on with Donald Trump and Hunter Biden? Well, we don't know. This episode of Relatable is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's having a wonderful week. So we've got something a little bit different for you today because we originally planned to have Dr. Vodi Bakaman. He's been on my show several times. He's got a new curriculum out based on his book, Fault Lines, helping churches work through the deceitful, progressive ideology that is social justice. What does the Bible really say about race, ethnicity, justice, reconciliation. So uh, we were going to have him on to talk about that, but then an emergency happened. And unfortunately, we had to stop our conversation and we're going to have to reschedule him and have him back on. I know you guys love him a lot and always love when I have him on. So we will reschedule that as soon as possible. So because we weren't able to finish that conversation, we kind of had to figure out what we were going to talk about today. So I had to recruit the help of Brie, producer Brie, and also Victoria. Victoria is very fortunate that she just happened to be in the studio today because she loves being on camera. She's always asking me if she can guest host the show. (laughs) And I'm like, Victoria, maybe, maybe one day. No, I'm just kidding. They were kind of reluctant, but they they are helping. They're helping with the show. So I don't really know exactly what we're going to talk about at the beginning. We are going to get to this crazy ACLU story that I wanted to get to yesterday um, and, and didn't have time, didn't have time for. So I just kind of want to riff on a couple things because we were talking about before the episode started, the things that we have not been paying attention to going on in the news that no one in the relatable audience has even asked me to pay attention to, but I know is important. I'm just going to be really honest, and this is not a great thing to say as a conservative commentator, but I am not up to date on what's happening with Donald Trump right now. <laughs> is any? Are no. you guys up to date on what's going on with Donald Trump? No. Well, like, not at all, which is so, it's, I mean, it's supposedly it's sad. Not good. I heard just the other day when he got indicted again, someone gasped and and told me that and i was like is that even surprising at this point i know it, that's that's what it is it's not surprising yeah i wouldn't gasp at that yeah but i've okay i felt better because i heard glenn say this morning that he doesn't even really know what to make of all of this and he has mm-hmm. people that he respects conservatives that he respects on both sides of the indictment, some saying, I guess it's justified and some saying it's totally not, or some saying Mm. that Trump is going to win, some saying that he's totally going to lose, (laughs) whatever. I don't even know. But that makes me feel better that there are people on both sides of this story. And I'm just going to be perfectly honest. For me, it's a little bit like Russiagate, which I knew was a Mm. witch hunt and all of that, but I didn't know the minutia. I didn't know the details. And I kind of told myself, all right, when it's all said and done, when the Mueller report comes out, then we'll talk about it and we'll figure out what's really going on. And um, what was the other one that we said? Hunter we, Biden. Hunter Biden. Yeah. What's going on? I mean, more laptop stuff? I don't know. I can't even really wrap my head around the whole laptop thing. I can't yeah. stop hearing about it. And I know it's important. But um, it's just a lot. I hear yeah. that word a lot. Yes. Um, so I don't know. Maybe someone can break it down. Yeah, I'm not us. trying to be. I don't want anyone to interpret this as flippancy. Like we right. don't care or we don't think it's important or we don't think it's consequential. I definitely see how a two-tier justice system is consequential. That if you are on the progressive side, you get insulated. And if you are not on the progressive side, then you get targeted. Obviously, that's very important. So these stories absolutely have meaning for all of us. It's just that it's such one thing after another that it's hard to keep up with. And usually, like, I can tell what you guys want me to talk about based on the things that you send me. 
based on my Instagram DMs mostly, sometimes my YouTube comments, but my Instagram DMs, people will say, have you seen this? Can you talk about this? I have not gotten one message, one email. I don't think one comment or tweet saying, hey, Allie, like, why haven't you talked about these stories? Will you please get into Donald Trump and all this stuff? I I, I haven't I haven't gotten anything in my audience of people curious about that. So I'm guessing that a lot of people listening feel the same way I do. And they're still more interested in the stories that we've been talking about. Let me pause. Let me tell you all about my first sponsor for the day. And that is Adele Natural Cosmetics. Have you guys ever tried an Adele Natural Cosmetics product at all? No, but I've been yet. dying to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I use Adele Natural Cosmetics every day. And I love it. I love their moisturizer. I love their foundation. Um, It's a lightweight foundation. It's not the foundation that I'm wearing right now. We have to have different kind of makeup for the studio cameras and the lights. But on a day-to-day basis, I do wear my Adele Natural Cosmetics foundation. I love that everything that they make is toxin-free and that it's all natural, holistic ingredients that they make themselves. So everything is USA made. This is a family-run company. um, And they have the same values that you and I do. Like they're always telling me that they're praying for me, that they're um, just here for me, supporting me, encouraging me. And this is the kind of family, the kind of business that you want to support and the kind of products that you want to put on your face. I think it really makes a big difference in the texture and the health of my skin. Go to AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. Enter code Ally at checkout for 25% off your first order. AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. Code Ally for 25% off your first order. AdeleNaturalCosmetics.com. Code Ally. also no one has asked me about this but I kind of wanted to talk about it because it's so crazy another thing that I don't know that much about but it's insane is the submarine thing (laughs) yeah is that funny Brie no (laughs) is that that funny to you I'm laughing because I was telling you before that I didn't I hadn't read about the story at all I just looked up at like a news screen and saw that it was something about a submarine exploring the Titanic remains and I thought that the news story was people were looking at the titanic remains i didn't know something had actually happened yeah um and so so people all day were yesterday, just like oh my you thought people were like oh, the titanic <laughs> and it was on the news all day and i was like that can't be the biggest news story of today um but you were just like i do this too sometimes <laughs> where i see a headline and i'm like that does not sound right and then I just don't look into it. I didn't it. even look it up. I was like, that doesn't, yeah. So I didn't know all day yesterday. I was curious why um, that was the biggest news story, but. Okay, let me read a little bit about it just yeah. in case some people don't know, because this sounds like a nightmare, a mm-hmm. nightmare. So this is from the independent banging herd in search for missing Titanic tourist submarine with less than 24 hours of oxygen left. Nightmare, nightmare mm-hmm. headline. Um, so this is Ocean Gate Expeditions. Uh, this is a submarine that I guess is a tourist submarine that went to go look at the remains of the Titanic, which are pretty close to America, which I didn't realize. So this is what the Independent says. Uh, there are now less than 24 hours of oxygen left in the missing Titan submersible that's what they call it, submersible submarine, as rescue efforts continue for the five divers. So there are five divers in this little capsule type thing, and we'll put up a picture of it. A Canadian aircraft searching for the sub in the Atlantic Ocean detected intermittent intermittent banging noises from the vicinity of its last known location. I don't understand that. So if you hear banging noises and you're like, and you're in the, I, I don't under, can you not follow it? Can you not go there and just be like, okay, we're going to get them out? The crew Mm -hmm. searching for the missing sub heard banging sounds every 30 minutes on Tuesday. And again, four hours later after additional sonar devices, uh, sonar, is it sonar? Mm -hmm. Sonar. I I think I said sonar. Sonar devices were deployed. Um, However, uh, Rear Admiral John Mogger of the U.S. Coast Guard, who is leading the surge, said that we don't know the source of the noise. I just feel like you should go see. That you should go investigate. Um, So, okay. CEO and founder of Ocean Gate Expedition, Stockton Rush, British billionaire explorer Hamish Harding, renowned French diver Paul Henri... Nargole and Pakistani businessman 
Shazada Daywood and his 19-year-old son, Suleiman Daywood, are on the Ocean Gate Expedition's submarine Titan. So the watercraft submerged on Sunday morning from its support vessel to travel to the Titanic wreckage which sits at a depth of 12,500 feet. About an hour and 45 minutes later, the Titan lost contact with its mothership. (gasps) The Polar Prince, authorities said. The Titan is equipped with a four-day emergency oxygen supply. It is estimated that the five missing passengers have less than 24 hours of oxygen supply left in the vessel. Oh, my goodness. I still don't understand with all of the technology that we have today. I mean, literally, like Xi Jinping personally probably knows exactly what we are doing at every minute of every day. Yeah. And we can't, we don't have the technology to be able to find these people. How are they even going to the bathroom? That's a good question. A nightmare in itself. Yeah, and you that's can't its own open nightmare. it. I think that I would take the risk and open the submarine. Well, okay, so I, well, <laughs> well, that's a hot take. That we? is a hot take. <laughs> I mean, okay, if you're running out of oxygen, either way. Well, the problem is the the pressure where they're at in the ocean. I was reading something where if like even like one of the windows or like some sort of like pressure valve snapped within the submarine, like they would just be crushed instantly. Yeah. I don't know the science behind it. So I'm, like, you can fact check that, I guess. But um yeah, I think opening anything at that depth is not possible, which is why, I just read this, only like 3% of the ocean has been even explored. The ocean terrifies me. Ocean is terrifying. It's terrifying. Why, why do you, I don't know why people want to go to space or go into the ocean. There's a reason, like, okay, <laughs> there's a reason why God made us have to stay on Earth. And... <laughs> And <laughs> created well, gravity. The ocean is He's on like, Earth. I literally created a force to keep your feet on the ground. Why are you trying? I didn't give you gills. <laughs> I didn't give you the ability to go to Mars. I put you on Earth. Why do people do this? This is going to be like someone's going to clip this and they're going to do the same thing that they did with the dinosaur episode. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Which people are still mad about. Oh, well. Be mad. Um, okay. Did you also know the missing Titan submarine has one button? This is according to Twitter. Is maneuvered using a fake Nintendo controller <laughs> and was built with bits ordered off the internet and from Camper World. Two and a half miles under the sea. I don't know what that means. But they someone posted a picture of apparently like the knockoff Nintendo controller that's used to like navigate or to help the uh help it help the submarine navigate. Okay, this is according to Complex, which is actually an outlet. The missing Titanic submarine was reportedly piloted by a Logitech controller and previously got lost during a live TV segment promoting the voyage. <laughs> okay. What? It just gets yeah. worse and worse for it, them. It really does. I also, I'm reading now, again, this is just reading for the first time. The CEO of Ocean Gate, which is operating the Titanic Tour submarine, explains that the company didn't want to hire any experienced 50-year-old white guys yes. because they weren't inspirational. Yes, I saw that too. I saw that too. There's a video going around that Ian Miles Chong shared and someone else is in it. I don't know who's in the video actually hosting the video, but yeah, apparently, you know, they didn't want to hire the 50 year old white guys. And I'm not saying that that's why this happened, but it's just another example of like priorities, Mm -hmm. like just hire the people that can do a good job. And they obviously didn't. Yeah. The key word is experienced. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Um, crazy, crazy. Well, I guess we should be, I mean, we should be praying for them. Let's see when that independent article was published. So that was published only 30 minutes ago. So apparently they still have 24 hours left of oxygen. Still don't know where they are, like, going to the bathroom, how they're even functioning. I mean, they must be absolutely terrified. This has got to be one of the worst ways to die, right? I think Just knowing that there's a ticking time bomb yeah and uh, did they have food did they have enough water surely you're prepared for this right if they're it doesn't all... sound like it yeah that's the thing i'm like that based on what i'm hearing about this company i feel like they wouldn't be prepared for something yeah. like this it sounds like they thought it would just be like such a quick and easy trip mm-hmm. and that they're just they weren't worried about it. obviously giving a nintendo controller 
worst fear unlocked <laughs> worst fear unlocked i, I don't just fyi i don't want to go see the titanic i yeah. love the movie <laughs> i don't want to go see the actual the drag record. though <laughs> It's like four the movie? hours long. Yeah, I liked it though. It's a classic. Four hours of misery. <laughs> oh my gosh, you don't think it's good? Well, the first part it, isn't misery, it's really. It's really good, but it just, it takes so long. There's like two hours of them dying. Yeah, and you've seen people debate like, there was room on the door. There was. Rose. There was room. There was room. There was, was no selfish. reason for that. It's an age old debate. But really, really good acting though really good acting like when Kate Winslet is like doesn't have a voice she can't even say Jack because it's so So cold out there and then she whistles that's a good it's a great movie I love sad movies though I love sad long movies I could sad long I do I do I love meet Joe Black that's another sad long movie I love Gone with the Wind, which is a sad, long movie. It's a sad, long movie. It's a good one, though. Yeah, I just, I love it. I don't know. That's probably not good. All right, quick pause to tell you about pre- Born. So Preborn is a network of clinics that offers free sonograms to uh, pregnant moms. This is a way to help show women the life that is growing inside them so they will choose life, choose to keep their children. They see they save tens of thousands of babies every year. Blaze has a goal specifically of saving 70,000 babies in 2023 by providing these free sonograms to women. And how we're doing that is we are getting you to donate whatever you can to pre-born to make it possible for them to keep offering these free sonograms. So $28 is how much a free sonogram costs. So if you can donate that, if you can donate more that really does make a huge difference. So you can dial on your phone pound 250 baby or go to preborn.com slash Allie and make your tax deductible donation preborn.com slash Allie preborn.com slash Allie. Okay, so I just wanted to note this chart that I saw tweeted by Brad Wilcox and we've had uh, Dr. Wilcox on the show before and um, he is oh I thought I had it right in front of me let me pull it up uh, so he works at the University of Virginia he is a professor and the director of the National Marriage Project at UVA we've had him on to talk about the dangers of the family diversity theory his studies that he has done and that he has been analyzing for the past several years just prove over and over again that kids do best with their mom and their dad not just any two any one or any three adults he talks a lot about the family he talks a lot about different trends especially when it comes to children and he posted uh he posted a study the source is monitoring the future analyzed by gene twinge and this is um, data that goes from 91 to 2023. We'll put it up if you're watching on YouTube. And it's depressive symptoms in U.S. 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. Depressive symptoms in U.S. 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. And so they were asked to answer these three questions and I guess see how much they agreed with these statements. And one is, I can't do anything right. Two, my life is not useful. Three, I do not enjoy life. So if you look all the way back at 1991, the kids these ages um, saying these things, it was low. I mean, it was still kind of high. It was anywhere from 20 to 25 percent of kids were saying that they felt this way. And then it actually dipped really low. Like when we were in high school, there were very few people saying, I don't enjoy life. My life is not useful. I can't do anything right. Or at least when I was in high school, I guess I'm a little bit older than y'all. Um, so that actually dipped in like 2010. And let me just pause and say, I do feel like that was the golden era of America. 
I think from like 2005 to 2010, we were rocking with it. Like things were going well. <laughs> like the movies were good. The music was good. We felt like we were past all of like, you know, no one really cared about race. No one cared about a lot of this divisive political stuff and things like things were going well. I don't remember thinking about politics and this divisive stuff when I was in middle school and high school. Do y'all? No. I've had to ask my parents if, because now I'm an adult, and then I wasn't, um, if it was like this then. And I think social media has made it worse with mm -hmm. that being more prominent. But um, I mean, my parents were like, no, it's yeah. not like this. Um, and that's another thing is that we didn't have social media, right. but there was no pressure to be an activist. Mm-hmm either to put your pronouns in your profile or are you for this? Are you against this? Do you have a stance on this? I mean, the Obama election was when I was a junior, senior, junior. And so I remember that, but I also went to like a conservative Christian school. So most people were on the same page, but still it just, they like weren't really topics of conversation. I also think because if you look at the 90s, it was a little bit higher that these kids were like had depressive symptoms, 8th, 10th and 12th graders. I think it's because of Nirvana and Third Eye Blind. <laughs> I think it's because of the music that they were listening to. Like, OK, we got Nelly in high school. They got, you know, know, we had grunge. Paramore. What? Paramore. Paramore. That's true. We did, uh, okay, I actually did listen to depressing music yeah, in high school. goth forever in middle yeah. school. That's, you know what? That's so true. Dashboard confessional. Mm -hmm. You oh. can't be happy and listen to secondhand serenade. No, <laughs> with a lot tonight. of eyeliner too. Eyeliner. Oh, dye. yeah. Well, I dyed my hair black. Uh, me too. The emo face. Your hair is almost. Well, my hair used to not be, though, and so I went like jet black. Jet black? Jet black. Box dye? Yeah. Like uh, you did it yourself at One home? One time I did, yes. And I had a pink streak. Oh, so nice. It was the vibe. Did you dye your hair in high school? <laughs> yeah. I did black. I did red. Of course. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I went through the boxes. <laughs> through the boxes. I went through the boxes. Terrible. <laughs> terrible for our brains. <laughs> really Terrible bad. for our health, our hair. Oh, my gosh. So anyway, like these were the biggest things that a lot of us were dealing with. Not that people didn't go through really hard times in high school and things like that. But it, as far as like world problems, we were mostly, I think, focused on our lives and what was going on and social media puts this unrealistic pressure on people not just to be perfect not just the comparison thing not just the feelings of exclusion which are natural to adolescents and then exacerbated times 10 when you have social media but also we didn't carry the weight of news on our shoulders like the weight of elections we knew that no one cared what we thought about those things and we didn't want to like bring them forth so anyway i wonder if that is part of the reason like for the dip in depressive symptoms when I was in high school. I don't know. But the important part is to note that it skyrocketed from about 2008, it looks like it hit a low, to 2023. And certainly has increased a lot since 91 when they first started gathering this data. Now, 49.5% of 8th, 10th, and 12th graders think that they can't do anything right. 10th and, or, uh, uh, and 48.9% say, I do not enjoy life. Wow, 50%. I do not enjoy life. <laughs> and then 44% say that my life is not useful. I mean, there's there's so much behind that. It has to be. I mean, there's got to be several factors. Uh, obviously, parenting, family, the disintegration of the family. Parents, I think, being busier too busy to parent their kids, to invest in their kids, to discipline their kids. I think that parents also allow their kids, especially up until now, to be on social media, to be on TikTok. That's bad for your brain. I was reading yesterday, ironically on Instagram, that like the dopamine that is released by the videos that we watch on TikTok and stuff. I forget the terminology that they used, but basically it sets you up to be tired and lazy for the rest of the day. Um, and that makes sense. And if you're tired and lazy and feeling purposeless, because I know how I feel when I spend, say I'm supposed to be doing something and then I end up spending 30 minutes to an hour just scrolling on Instagram 
instead of doing something that I needed to do. I feel awful after that. I'm, I feel like I'm like, I'm a loser for just doing that. I can't believe it. And I'm mad at myself and you feel totally unproductive and useless and like a waste of space because you've just wasted this precious time. And I don't even know if people always have those conscious thoughts when they're doing it, but I do think that that has an effect on how you feel about yourself constantly spending time on social media. I don't know. I think that's part of it. What do y'all yeah, think? It's like a social media hangover. If yeah. I'm on Instagram or TikTok for too long, I start to just feel icky and anxious afterwards. Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh, what's wrong with me? And then sometimes I'll even go back to Instagram because I'm like, oh, I don't like how that feels. And then I do it again. <laughs> yes. And then I just feel like crap the rest of the day. Yeah, I do that. I do that too. I like don't like how I feel when I get off of Instagram. And to get rid of that bad feeling, you like you don't even realize that you do it sometimes. You just like open mm-hmm. up the app. Whew, that's it's bad. addictive. That's bad. That's not good. Okay, another break to tell y'all about Crowd Health. So Crowd Health is not health insurance. It is healthcare coverage that comes through the community that Crowd Health has created. They give you the tools to negotiate and crowdfund your medical bills. So all you have to do is pay a $50 membership fee to get access to services like telemedicine and bill negotiation. And then you join the community at Crowd Health, which is a group of members just like you who want to help pay for each other's unexpected medical events without going through all of the expenses and the complications and the headaches of traditional health insurance. Insurance. You guys have all probably experienced the pains that come with using health insurance. Like sometimes it feels like you don't even really have coverage. Well, they make it really easy by paying this monthly by paying this monthly fee, you are helping cover your own costs as well as the cost of the entire community. They make it really, really simple. You can also get access to discounted prescriptions, so much more without doctors networks messing things up up. It's time for you to opt out of restrictive health insurance plans and let CrowdHealth help fit your health care needs. Get started today for just $50 a month. Use code Allie to get that discount to get the health care you deserve. CrowdHealth is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's join how, uh, joincrowdhealth.com, code Allie. And I also think it, part of it is also... A social contagion aspect, Dr. McFillan talked about this, that we're not a lot, like, we can't say anymore that we're just sad or that we're worried about something. It's, and I'm not saying this is true of everyone, because obviously some people, it's, it's different than being sad. They would say that they truly are depressed, but I think today it is so common just to say that you're depressed and to say that you hate yourself or whatever it is and to say that you're anxious rather than, well, you're just like worried about something that's normal to be worried about that. That's fine. Um, I'm so glad I didn't have that language when I was in high school because I think I could have convinced myself that I was depressed. I mean, what teenager doesn't kind of go through that? To where they're like, oh, my parents don't like me. I'm mad at this person at school. I got a bad grade. And you do just think, I can't do anything right. And if someone told me, you know what? A pill can fix that Mm -hmm. and you'll never feel bad about yourself. That's enticing. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's just the, you know, if you're constantly being fed on TikTok that like that's that's the trendy thing yeah is not even feeling depressed but it's like the med culture yeah it's like mm, don't forget to take your antidepressants in the morning like i've seen youtube <sighs> videos where people are like and you know reminder before you go to bed take your meds it's like that's Crazy. the norm they're just yeah. expecting that people especially young people are on some form of medication and that's been normalized to the point where like that you just need that yeah. You just need it to live. Um, and that's a part of like your healthy routine, like eating right. your vegetables. Right. You brush your teeth, you take your meds, you go to bed. That's oh, just that's crazy. fed into people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think, and I d- yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think especially as women, especially teenagers, we, I mean, there's four, sorry, related rows. There's four different parts to your cycle too, to your menstruation cycle. Yeah. And when you feel a different way in each one, 
sometimes you can feel more anxious or feel more worried. And then you're like, oh, is something wrong with me? Do I need to get on something? And then even getting on the pill can also mess with you mentally too. And I think people just aren't aware of that. Teenagers aren't aware and parents just, they don't know either about all the different menstruation cycles. Birth control is such a big one that I think has affected so many women. So many people around our age were put on birth control in high school who were not mm-hmm. sexually active. Who we, It was just like given to us because, oh, you have acne and you don't want acne. Mm-hmm. Oh, you missed, sorry again, related bros, but oh, you missed one period. And so, and you know, you're not pregnant, but like your period is now irregular. Oh, you might have PCOS, which some people really do. But I think that was overdiagnosed again. And people were just put on Yaz and like yeah. put on these. And it was just like something that we would just talk about even in college. Like, oh, yeah, my birth control is making me sad or I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm depressed. I'm crying all the time. I'm emotional. And it was just like accepted that you just did that. And again, I, I don't even think that our parents thought about the consequences no. to that kind of stuff. No. And we just didn't know. No, that happened to me too. My doctor said, let's put you on it. Oh, you're cramping. My mom didn't even blink. Like, okay, this is what the doctor's saying. Let's yeah. do it. Because you, I mean, I was going to say you used to be able to do that, but we used to think that you could do that. I think we didn't realize that we should be even curious about how pharmaceutical companies make make money. Yeah. But I wanted to read this message that I got because I'm still getting a lot of, well, most mostly positive feedback from the Dr. McFillin episodes. Go listen to those if you haven't already. Um, but a lot, I mean, a lot of negativity too, like a lot of anger in my comments. People get really mad when I tell them to go listen to the full episode. And then they're like, well, why don't you just take the reel down? Well, no, I'm putting the reel up because I want you to go listen to the full episode. But you're saying things, you're accusing him of not saying something or saying something that if you actually listen to the whole episode, you would see that you're wrong about that or that you're wrong in your accusations of him at least. So people are upset and people are still insisting that the chemical imbalance thing is actually true, which it's actually been debunked several, several times over the years. It's not just him saying that. But anyway, so here's um, here's a message that I got just about kids being overprescribed this stuff. Like when Dr. McFillin said that he met a girl who called herself Alexa Ho instead of like because she's on Lexapro. <laughs> And it was, again, like a trendy thing. Really sad. So um, here's what a message that I got. And with her permission, I posted it without her name. And then I got a ton of messages confirming this from other people who, uh, who work in high schools and work with young people in different ways. So she said, unpopular social worker opinion, but I'm thankful for this episode, the conversations with Dr. McFillin. Working with 14, 15 year olds, so many of them have become so numb to emotions that a normal emotional response sends them into a tailspin. That is so worrisome. I don't know how many times I said this year, hun, you're sad. It's okay to be sad in this situation. When they brought me a problem and their solution was to call their psychiatrist for an increase. Definitely not against meds, but think they should only be used in extreme cases. I think I had three out of 75 plus students this year that I thought a psych med would be beneficial to them while they sort through their root issues. And obviously I can't confirm or deny whether those three people needed psychiatric medication, but I got so many messages from other counselors, mentors, teachers, social workers saying the same thing that yes the kids that i'm seeing these young teenagers they are overly medicated they're on depression medicine they're on anxiety medicine one of you who is a doctor said that you had this uh kid come in and he was so nervous about uh some kind of like eye procedure that he was having and he apologized for being nervous and said oh i'm nervous because i have anxiety And you're thinking, no, you're nervous because you're about to have an eye procedure and it's okay to be nervous. I think it's so crazy because I think that the younger generation is a very like feelings driven uh, generation. Like they seem to put their emotions first, but at the same time, they're so scared of anything other than numb. They're so scared of anything. I've noticed this about them. The apathy is so cool to them 
they're scared to actually like feel something besides anger. You do see the anger and the activism, but to feel like worried or to feel sad and then to just connect those to circumstances which are fleeting, that seems like something they're not able to do or to emotionally regulate or to distinguish between a mood and a diagnosis. Like some people are more emotional. Some people are more sensitive. Some people have bigger mood swings. It's just how they are. Some people feel really deeply about things. Some people cry easily. Some people don't. Like I I definitely have different, I definitely have different moods depending on a million things. It could be sleep. It could be what I ate, what I didn't eat. Um, it could be the fact that I'm pregnant. It could be the fact that I'm stressed <laughs> about something. Um, it could be the fact that, because sometimes I do this and maybe this is a process we all need to get better at myself included but sometimes I'll notice that I have like an underlying sadness or an underlying nervousness about something and I have to stop and think wait why do I have that Mm -hmm. like because I for I forgot why I have it but usually I can trace it back to something like oh yeah that that like hurt my feelings or that happened or I'm worried about that happening tomorrow whatever it is and sometimes I can't and when you can't you just have to kind of be like that's life you know yeah, when I was when I was overseas, they had us sometimes like check in with counselors every once in a while. Um, and one of them kind of changed how I thought about emotional health, which is talked about a lot um, and and obviously mental health. But she said that having emotional being emotionally healthy is not not having emotions. It's yeah. not thinking I'm sad that sadness needs to go away. Sadness is a human feeling that is normal and natural emotional health is being curious about why you feel the way that you feel it's not trying to get rid of the feelings that you're feeling you're healthy when you're asking yourself why do i feel this way um not when you're not feeling that way and that just kind of changed how i thought about it because yeah all the negative stuff like the the sadness and the anger I feel like a lot of times we just want to be like, how do I, I need to figure out how to not feel that anymore. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's like, that's not the answer. You need to figure out why you feel that way. That's, that's the thing you need to address. Okay, let me tell y'all again about Good Ranchers, one of my favorite sponsors, because I love their products so much. We use them every night and I love their chicken. Their uh, ground beef is probably what we use the most because it's so versatile, but my husband is really good at cooking steak. So it just makes our life easier. We don't have to worry about going to the store, picking out the right cuts of meat and all of that. I love that it's all from American farms and ranches. And so I can support that industry that has really been decimated over the past several years. And then of course, supporting a Christian conservative company. That's what we're all trying to do more and more. So get all of your meat from Good Ranchers. They've got seafood, they've got beef, they've got different cuts of steak, they've got the non premarinated chicken, the premarinated chicken, all amazing stuff. It shows up at your front door on dry ice. Get that box of meat every month. You'll save a lot of money when you do. It'll also protect you from the inflation that we're seeing in the grocery stores. Perfect in time for 4th of July if you will be grilling out that day, which you should. It's an American tradition. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout for $30 off your order. GoodRanchers.com code Allie, goodranchers.com, code Allie. I do think it's just strange. There's so many extremes in this because, and this is something I talk a lot about in my book, this idea, you hear this over and over again by like the pseudo psychologists on Instagram, which I just like don't recommend people following, but um, like all your feelings are valid. I think that's also dangerous. Like suppressing yeah. your feelings are dangerous, but also validating all of your feelings. Yeah. Well, you could feel jealousy about someone and okay, it's, it's a real feeling and mm-hmm. you could get to the root of why you feel insecure about that. But it, it's not necessarily valid. Not right. your anger isn't right. always valid because valid means it's true. It's rooted in truth. So something can exist without being valid. And I think that's also, there's like, I don't know, emotional responsibility has to be like acknowledging and understanding your feelings while not focusing so much on them and allowing them to lead you. I think part of being an adult, an adult something that distinguishes us from toddlers as a mom of toddlers, is that my toddlers, they cannot separate their emotions really from like 
what is happening or logic mm -hmm. like they're two they're the same things right now and so what they feel is happening that might as well just be their reality they can't yeah move past that but something that's supposed to distinguish us from toddlers is our ability to say i feel this way that's not real or that's just not the most important thing right now and so i need to react differently than how i'm feeling mm -hmm. right. and because i guess that's hard I think that's one reason why we are over medicated. That's like yeah. a discipline that's difficult. Not being led by emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And I, again, wonder if social media makes that harder because, Victoria, I don't know if you feel this way, but if I'm distracted by something, by social media, I am a, I'm not as good at whatever else I'm doing, whether it's talking to my husband or whether it's parenting my kids. I'm less patient. I'm more testy and I'm more Absolutely. snappy because. I think it's some kind of thing in your brain, not just being distracted, but something's happening there that is making you more on edge and you become like really lazy in conversation, in parenting and things like that when you allow yourself to be distracted. So I think that's part of it. They're so used to those quick dopamine hits that the difficulty and discipline that's required yeah, it's like a regulate. drug. Yeah. It feels like a drug sometimes. Even when I'm with my son, sometimes I'll catch myself. Like I won't even, you know how sometimes you're driving and you're like, I don't even know how I got from this point yeah. to this point. I do that sometimes on social media. I'm like, I don't even know how long I've been on here. Yeah. And my my child is just playing by himself and I'm over here on social media. And yeah. Yeah. I also, I think we live in such a godless society and it makes me so sad totally. because- I struggle, like, I feel like I have really, really big emotions. And if I didn't have the Lord, if I wasn't able to lay those emotions at the feet of Jesus and say, like, God, I know all these bad feelings are not stemming from you. I lay them at your feet. I don't know what I would do. I would probably want to be medicated, too. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes me so sad for the people that don't know the Lord and that don't have a relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Because of, they have all these feelings that they don't know what to do with and they can't separate that from God's truth and what God says. Yeah. And it's pretty incredible that we do have a God who tells us over and over again, Old Testament to New Testament, do not fear, do not worry. So he's recognizing that these are real emotions, but he says it is possible to not, to not do those things. But he doesn't just say like, don't do them because it's bad. He says, do that because I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. And my dad reminded me of that this morning. I was worried about some situation and he was like, you're picturing this whole scenario playing out without God, like without him being in charge or without him being in control of this. And that's really what worry comes down to is picturing the future or picturing your situation without anyone who really cares about you and is guiding you. Okay, I wish we had more time to talk about all the other things that I wanted to talk about, but we'll save that for tomorrow. We've got a whole episode tomorrow that I can dedicate to talking about the ACLU story that I've been meaning to talk about. I'm glad that we just had this, um, this conversation today. And just to clarify, like I've said this before, I am not anti modern medicine. I'm not that crunchy. I'm not as crunchy as I want to be, although I did switch to glass straws which I'm pretty proud of myself about because I am trying to use plastic less, especially in these hot summer months. It makes me really uncomfy to think about my plastic like melting and then drinking from it. So, but I'm not as crunchy as I want to be. I am definitely for modern medicine and I'm, I'm not against that. I also am not invalidating your real experience with depression, real depression, real anxiety, real bipolar disorder. I'm not saying that all of these are in your head or a part of your imagination or that there aren't different perspectives on psychology and psychiatry. I'm not saying that, but I think we should all care. Again, as I've said a few times now, we should all care about the increased medicalization, especially of young people, the increased um, testimonials of depression and anxiety and emotional regulation, spiritual health, and how these really can't just be solved by pills. This seems like something that Christians should really care about. A book that's been recommended to me that I just bought because I think it's going to be helpful is 
by John Piper, When the Darkness Will Not Lift. Apparently, he really talks through depression and even medication from a biblical perspective. So I'm interested in learning more about that. And I'll just go ahead and recommend that book, even though I don't know everything that's in it because I like John Piper so much. And I think that he'll probably have a lot of things to say. All right, we'll get into all the stuff that I wasn't able to cover today or yesterday in tomorrow's episode. Uh, thanks so much for listening. We will be back here then. Mm-hmm.